Josh Groban in the studio. Nice to see you. So what's new? We're going to talk about the music, obviously, but where are you right now? What's going on with you personally? I'm just, just in case you forget, I'm going to put it he on He put the shirt. tag on his shirt. What was the question? I was engaging How in shenanigans. You, that's okay. How are you personally? What's going on? I'm good. Uh, I've been working so hard the last uh, year. This has been a lot. There's been a lot of things on my shoulders. Um, I've, been, I've been finishing up a TV show for Netflix, um, mm -hmm. so that's been a totally non-musical endeavor. So just... You know, doing doing. You but know, the acting works the going great. So fun. I I play a homicide detective. So yeah. each episode has been like a zany mystery, and okay. I get to s help solve them. Okay. Yes. Are okay. you ready for oh, this? We're gonna get, okay. Yes. We're Let's gonna get, get into something right, right now. now. I'm gonna help you out. Okay. You are. You're playing a homicide detective. Yes. Okay. Here's how we help you out. You ready? <laughs> Role playing. What are we doing? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, I'm a dead body. <laughs> <laughs> no. Why are I was, there handcuffs on my feet? Well, What's going on right now? I was a police officer before radio in Connecticut. Oh, my God. Throw that to the side. Wow. Jill's father. What? Is a retired D3 LAPD no homicide detective. Wow. Yeah. You well, came to the right place, buddy. My dad's a convicted murderer. Oh, my God. <laughs> you came to the right place. <laughs> and I went to the morgue gift shop once. <laughs> We're all uh, we're all really here to support. Well, thank you both and uh, for your for your family service. That's, You're welcome. Uh, oh, You're welcome. That's tremendous. Um, he didn't thank you for your dad's service. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And, and you too. Hey. You too. Um, I uh, want to talk about the music. So obviously, that's cool. Uh, sorry, to jump in. I want to talk yeah, about yeah. the music. But Jill was telling me a story. I never realized this about how you actually got your start. And we've interviewed you so many times, and I never knew this amazing story. I yeah. missed it. Yeah. I, well, I mean, I was, I was, uh, I was, a, I was just a, a little boy, yeah. And I was uh, singing with a with a voice coach who lived kind of near me. I went to uh, elementary school with his son, and so you know, he he heard me. I think through the Boy Scouts, I went over as a Boy Scout trip and took voice lessons with uh, with him. And and he said, "Oh, you've got a very good voice. We should keep taking lessons together." And as I was taking lessons with him through kind of high school, yeah, I guess uh, David Foster, incredible producer. Mm -hmm. um, said, uh, hey, he called him up and said, hey, who have you got who's young who can sing? I'm in a jam. I'm doing an event. So he put down, you know, five tapes of five different students. He picked mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, two weeks later after that event, he said, hey, I'm at the Grammys. I'm in another jam. Um, I need somebody to come in and sing with Celine. I was 17, 16, 17. To actually 17, do 17. the show singing well, with Celine? Well, I could. It, that might have happened. So the great Andrea Bocelli, uh, who's yeah. an incredible, incre still a great friend and great collaborator. Um, we, uh, he was stuck on a plane. And it's a song called The Prayer. And David called and said, hey, can you sing this with Celine until Andrea can get here? Right. And I'm thinking, you know, I had to leave class, like literally had to leave history class to go and do this. Oh, my gosh. And I'm standing on the X, and they're like, Who's, mm -hmm. where's this Josh Brolin guy? What, what's <laughs> did you say, I'm going to go uh, make history I, when you walked out of class? <laughs> I did not have that confidence oh. then. I did not do the showtime in front of the mirror. <laughs> I uh, crap my pants. Uh, so I went the, went the opposite side of the spectrum. Yeah. But no, they wouldn't let me in, and I'm, and I'm there, and Celine is, you know, walks out with her entourage, and she's, oh I mean, gosh. just couldn't have been kinder. She saw right. that I was nervous. She saw my hand was shaking. She took my hand. We brought Right. the front of the stage and so you know i wound up singing this song over and over and over with her yeah. and of course you know at the grammys at those rehearsals you got all kinds of artists that are sitting in the audience sure. waiting to go on and so madonna's yeah. out there and aerosmith's out there and ricky martin that was the year ricky martin became ricky martin that mm -hmm. that cup of life thing that he did mm -hmm. yeah. where all of a sudden everybody goes who's ricky martin so he's sitting out there and um and so and so they wound up saying to me, buy a suit, because we're not sure if Andrea can make it for the Grammys. No oh way. my gosh, are you kidding and me? And I'm thinking to myself, no, 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 wait, 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 time out. Like I This isn't supposed to happen. This isn't supposed to happen. To anybody. Mm, no. And, and 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 fate would have it that that luckily he did show up. Okay. I, I felt like I got my experience that I needed to get. Right. So eventually I get signed. Two years later I get signed. And ten years later I wind up singing that very song on the Grammys telecast with Andrea. So <gasps> it was a very full circle. My, My life career has been very, very full circle, but it started with that serendipitous, yeah. you know, hey, kid, can you show up here at 3 o'clock and, and sing this song? See, hearing you this tell is... that story is so much better than just reading that in some newspaper or magazine or something, because seeing you come alive and watching your eyes as well, you tell that story. I just remember how nervous I was, and I remember, you know, my dad just kind of giving me a push and saying, like, you know, you got this, because that's a, the, prayer, the prayer is a very high song, very hard song. And Every able, song you do is hard. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. From, from that moment on, I said okay, to myself, all right. I, if I don't sing songs that are this hard, right. what am I even doing with my life? Right, right. But before that, um, you know, I, I was in rehearsals to be Tevye and Fiddler on the Roof in my 11th grade mm -hmm. production of, mm -hmm. of Fiddler. So it was just a very different world that I was entering yeah. into. And um, But going through those moments, having a mentor, uh, and I feel this way about our great arts teachers. I feel sure. this way about any anybody in a young person's life that pushes them 
to um, to express themselves artistically is a total hero. That yeah. was David for me and my teachers at that time too, because I didn't think I could do that. Yeah. And you know, David's opinion was kind of like, I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. You know, get your butt up there and sing the song. I know you can do it. And uh, and and you know Man. that you know history history was you know. Kudos to you, just getting on that stage, Celine Dion at the Grammys, David Foster, everybody that's in play there. I mean, my gosh, dude. it was it was pretty nuts. And so then it, then it became a fun story to tell. And, yeah, and, that's a great uh, story. Thanks for sharing and that. I, again. And then uh, then I recorded I recorded that song for the first record. So so yeah, I mean those those moments now with you yeah. know, YouTube and things like that. Th- right. That was a very old like one, one of the last remaining kind of old school ways of doing ways something. of sure. doing right, it. Of right. like, Kid, you're on. You yeah. know. Now it's like if your video gets streamed, you know, hundred right. million times in your bedroom, it's like you know I think I think we should A and R this guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, then also you get to redo it in your bedroom a couple times too. To- you were oh. in front of all these stars right there on stage. There's no redo for That's you. That's exactly right. They hand yeah. you the microphone. Everybody around you is skeptical because yeah. you know everybody knows Andrea can can sing so brilliantly. And and I was just plucked out of high school. And everybody's yeah. saying to David like, "What are you doing, man? Like this is the Grammys. Like what are you doing with this kid?" And so, yeah, there was a lot to prove. I was I was blissfully naive, I think, at that age. Of Which what, helped, right? Of what it all meant. Yeah, right. You know, I was a theater kid, so I, I was not thinking to myself, this is my chance to be a recording star. So I, you didn't have that plan in your mind, the dream not, to become a recording star? Not even remotely. Wow. No. My plan was I was going to go to college. I was going to keep doing theater. I was hoping to go to Broadway one day. Like, okay. Like, yeah. And just be a well, working made, actor? I, was, I, I yeah. did. Well, I did. I find, you got to Broadway. Yeah, I went true. back to Broadway. I mean, I hosted the Tonys this year, so it was like it came back. It all it all comes back around, which is right. you know when I've talked to students, I did a commencement address this year. It's you know life is so strange when you choose the doors that open in front of you that you don't expect to open, and you right. have the courage to just say, you know what, I didn't know this door was going to open, mm-hmm. but something in me is telling me I got to take it, mm-hmm. and I'm going to go for it. Um, the things that were your original goals, oftentimes kind of come back in the strangest, most serendipitous mm-hmm. ways when you choose passion and you choose the, the instinct yeah. that gives you you know gives you the good feels. So that was my kind of my path. And um, now at 37, I'm just kind of looking back at the mm-hmm. last 15, 20 years and saying, wow, OK, all those things that that scared me so much that I thought if I take this path, mm-hmm. n- you know, nothing's going to be the same for mm-hmm. better or for worse. Um, it all wound up being for the better. So let's take a break. Come back. Play some music too. Josh Groban sure. in the studio. Do you have any fears? Think about this during the break. Do you have any fears now at 37? I mean, you talked about the fears as a kid of walking through this door. Dying doing that. alone. Okay, we'll be right back. We'll be back after these happy messages. conversation. Yes. Josh Groban's here. It is Valentine in the morning. Josh Groban's hanging out in the studio. The album is available September 21st. There's what, like three songs, I think, right now in the pre-sale? Yeah, there's three songs we released. Okay, because uh, we're going to play Granted. Great. Okay. Yeah, that is the single. Um, and that's that song, speaking of arts ed and speaking of those teachers and those moments that I had early on, Yeah. Granted and the lyric for Granted kind of came about from those moments. Um, it's a song that I felt like I needed to hear to myself, you know, when I was writing it, you know, right. the, the world that we're in right now, and you just flip through Twitter. Well, lyrically, it's empowering your song. You're telling people to get out there and really go for it. I think that, you know, in music, if you can find a song that is shares that message in a way that people can relate to in a, in a very universal way, um, that has always been a goal of mine when writing songs. It's easier said than said than done, but with Granted, um, you know, in the lyric video, we got kids from my my arts high school, LA County High School, and LA County High School for the Arts, got to shout them yep. out. To um to perform for for the lyric video and uh, you know it's uh it, it does have an inspiring message it really is just kind of going out and like I said walking through that door when it when it opens instead of um I'm gonna play it a second here but instead sure. of having you sing it because I know people always want you to sing in studio and stuff like that <laughs> I promise you that the, the album version will be much better than oh, <laughs> stuff, stuff, stuff. this morning read just this paragraph right there in your most inspiring Josh Groban voice oh well, so that... this is like a powerful dramatic reading now. My, my inspiring Josh Groban voice always drifts towards Sir Ian McKellen. Is that... That's no, fine. That's fine. That's you do great. that. Go right ahead. We love that. Go right Just ahead. go full Ian. If you have a dream... Good. No, that's more of Sean Connery. Actually. <laughs> well, that's great, too. <laughs> I like it. it. Uh, if you have a dream, go chase it. If you feel hope, don't waste it. If you find love, embrace it. And never take a single breath for granted. Now Sean's going to come in. The story's yours. Go write it. Tomorrow's undecided. Our days are counted on this planet. Never take a single breath for granted. Now do Christopher Walken. <laughs> Never take a single oh breath. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you, you take your breath for granted. You Don't 
don't hold your breath is what I'm saying. Don't don't hold your breath. <laughs> follow follow your, your, your dream, kid. I, I don't know. Here's That's Josh awesome. Groban. This is granted. It's Valentine in the morning, 104.3 MyFM. Josh Groban's here. It's Valentine in the morning. This is 104.3 MyFM. Round of applause. Great. Oh, you congrats. know what I just realized? What did you realize? That as I'm listening to that song again, yeah. it needs more cowbell. <laughs> I think you're right. Yeah. I didn't want to say it, but you said it. You know, sometimes... So the mix is done. The mix is yeah. done. We can't change oh, it. Right. It's, it's done. Dang it. But I'm so sure your listeners were all thinking the same thing. Your album and the new show come out on the same day. The same day. Did yes. you plan that? I <laughs> I did not plan that. I have been just eating snacks the last few weeks. But my manager uh, planned that. That's and, awesome. Uh, Perfect timing. And it, well, it, it actually wound up, you know, it was not It was planned and not planned. Like, it just, it just so happened that The Good Cop was going to be released around that time. Uh-huh. And we just kind of finished the album at a, at a time where it was going to be around that time. Look, my brother and I have the same birthday four years apart. Things just wind wow. up falling on the same date right. in my life. And when they do, it's always a good thing. So um, so it actually just kind of fell into place that that uh, that month. We knew they were going to be coming out around the same time. And Netflix said, hey, can we? And yeah. then Warner Brothers Records said, hey, can we too? And yeah. So it's kind of unofficial Groban Day. Man, you seem like such a you're in such a good spot right now. We joked around earlier about the fears, and you're like, oh, dying alone, whatever. But I mean, is there anything in your life right now that's that is giving you any problems, anything problematic? I mean, everything seems to be falling into place. I think I think as I'm as I'm uh, collecting my hours in this business and yeah. um, just kind of trying to, you know. You're, you become such an emotional late bloomer in this business. You know, like you get signed at 16, 17, you just don't know right. who you are. You know, you have to, and especially with my music that was was very much for an older audience at that time. Yeah. And, you know, having to sing these very serious, very traditional style songs mm-hmm, as mm-hmm. a 17, 18 year old kid who just had no clue, you know, right. you know, who I was as a person, you know, having to balance that with normal everyday life of like mm-hmm. a 25 year old or even a 30, like you just you grow up a little late and you start to yeah. you start to realize what your priorities are sometimes a little bit late. And so I think for me now, it's just a matter of I love what I do. I love working. I yeah. always want to have something locked and loaded ready to do next. Right. But I think balance is so important. I think making time for the things that help you recharge and help you be a human being, uh, I think, are the most important things. So what fuels your batteries? Um being with my family, yeah. you know, really like making time to just like go on trips with them and to to make sure I'm home in in a place that is my bed and with with not really anything on the schedule for a few right. days, like that right. I can just wake up and choose my day is something that is so rare mm-hmm. and uh, and you know you're always you're told within like a two or three year in advance schedule uh-huh. where you're going to be by the hour and so just just making time for yourself to like turn left or turn yeah. right. And whatever happens, happens. Uh, it's awesome. just is so important. So I'm, I'm trying to find more days like that. All right, I agree. Speaking of family, I don't know if you remember Sabrina over here. She works on her show. I think you yeah. guys met like nine months ago. Sabrina, you want to come over here and say hi? You want to stand up and say hi? <laughs> <laughs> wow. By the way, you're like the <laughs> only Maury artist. films in Connecticut, right? Just yes, so Maury films in Connecticut. Clear. You're fine. All right, great. But great. you're like the only artist we could do that joke to. <laughs> yeah. You're the only guy that would take it so well. <laughs> well, congratulations. Uh, we'll be very congratulations. happy. Uh, uh, can't wait to to balance my life. More, uh, apparently, uh, yeah. <laughs> news to your husband, but anyway, moving yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Give him my best. To... Oh my gosh! And then you have uh, you get a tour kicking off in October. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're um, you know this is a very kind of high energy album, and um, you know the the muse was kind on this record. There's a lot of a lot of good 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 vibes on this record. Who so, was your muse for this? Um, you know, the muse just lives in the walls. You okay. know, we we we've got a a a, a, a um, an on and on, on again off again relationship. The muse and I. Mm-hmm. You know, you you show up and hope for the best, and mm-hmm. uh, sometimes the muse crawls out and gives you mm-hmm. an earworm, and uh, that was the case with uh, this record. But you know, the experiences you have are mm-hmm. you know are the muse as well. The people that. You love the the friendships that you have. Right. You know, this has been a, a couple of years of so many experiences, mm-hmm. being in New York, being with an incredible cast on Broadway, all yeah. of which are brilliant musicians in their own right. And I was constantly going out to see their shows and hearing yeah. everything from you know new contemporary operas to new pop songs to klezmer music to whatever. They all had different styles that they played. And so by the time I was done with my Broadway show, I had just so many ideas rattling around on my phone. So it was it was just one of those you know super creative inspirational couple of years which you know is not always the case sometimes Mm -hmm. you make an album and you look back at it and you say i'm really proud of this and Mm -hmm. man every step of the way was a slog right and um 
and you show up and do the work anyway. You continue to keep trying, yeah. but some years it's just a wave of creativity, and that was just one of that was just one of those time periods. Eight albums in, that was that was the year I had. The only thing I'll say about your music, which becomes difficult for me, is singing along in the car sometimes. Yeah, because well, your voice is so good. Well, thank you very much. But your voice, I, I, I talked about this. Yeah. Uh, earlier today is that you know having a great speaking voice, being able to that can that can hurt your voice more than singing. To be able to talk huh. and to talk professionally. Uh, Have actually, you heard our show prior? <laughs> <laughs> to talk professionally, this is not the most. No, no, no. no. I, I've yes. grown up listening to you. So, oh my God! So, stop that! Don't no, no, do no, no, that. No, I am. I, I did. <sighs> I did. I mean, I mean, I'm not. I'm not. Well, you're from here, and you went to school, I'm and you heard everything. You're a Los, Los Angeles guy. I know. So, I know. So, so you heard me on Kiss. You heard me here. I've, I get I've, it. Yeah, I've, you know, so. Um, so that's very impressive to me because singers, we all hate our own, our speaking voices. Right. We, we just, you know, so, um, so I'm, I am mutually, uh, impressed. That's very nice. Thank you very no, much. That's true. Uh, I don't love my speaking voice. I love my singing voice. <laughs> I really we enjoy know. that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. We know. Yeah, wow. especially in the restroom. Hey. How do you know? Yeah. No, we can well, hear you him can in hear the women's restroom. You raise me up. <laughs> <laughs> it cuts right through you. You're talking about the toilet seat, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, right. Thank you. Yeah. Josh, thanks for yeah. coming in, buddy. Thank yeah. you very much. Great to see you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.